Welcome to Explosive Enterprises. While Marishin has offered a Mataba replica for years, for 2023 they have released a new run with some minor updates and changes. Today we're reviewing the new version and seeing whether it's still primarily a collector's piece or now actually viable as an airsoft sidearm. Mataba was the brainchild of Emilio Ghisoni, an Italian inventor who sought to make better revolvers for rapid-fire shooting competitions and thus founded the company Macchine Thermobilistiche Mateba, translating to the quaintly literal thermoballistic machines. His earliest designs placed the cylinder ahead of the grip so that it could be lower than on a traditional revolver, reducing muzzle flip from recoil, but it was the 2006 M first introduced in 1990 that cemented the iconic Mateba look. This revolver fires from the 6 o'clock chamber rather than the 12 o'clock, placing the barrel lower relative to the frame and again reducing muzzle flip. In 1997, this was followed by the Se Unica, or Unica 6, even stranger for having a recoil system that recocks the action and earns the designation Auto Revolver. Gizoni would go on to design the Rhino for Chiapa in the mid-2000s before his death in 2008. While these revolvers were all intended for competition, not combat, their futuristic looks have made them obvious choices for sci-fi media, particularly cyberpunk-themed works where they're stereotypically appropriate sidearms for gumshoe detectives. The 2006M is prominently featured in the 1995 film adaptation of Ghost in the Shell, and this was specifically what prompted Marishin to develop their replica. This particular one is a deep black variant of the 6-inch Mataba. Now unfortunately, we do not have a real 2006M to compare against, as there are believed to be fewer than 10 in the United States. However, we do have a real Unica, and while not the same model, they are more alike than they are different. So, let's start with externals. As is typical for Martian, this is a predominantly plastic gun. The deep black finish, however, does an excellent job of replicating the appearance of blued steel. It's dark, but not pure black, it's reflective, it shows hues of brown and blue where fingerprints mar the finish, and it even appears silver where scratched. The real Mataba has a gorgeous deep gloss blue with a purple tone on the cylinder, and while the Marishin doesn't quite match it, this plastic is more convincing than most metal airsoft guns we've encountered. Unfortunately, the deep black revolver is noticeably lightweight in the hand at a mere 745 grams or 1 pound 10 ounces, and while it does have an internal weight in the barrel to help with the balance, it still feels a bit toy-like. The heavyweight version is somewhat better in this regard, but it abandons the bluing altogether for a matte graphite gray that resembles Park Rising, but doesn't match any real Mataba. Going front to back, at the muzzle is a cap designed to look like the barrel of the real thing with a bit of faux rifling. The inner barrel is recessed slightly to be less obvious. Above this is the blade front sight, which adjusts for elevation via a single screw. The barrel shroud is unremarkable, though the hop adjustment is an unobtrusive hole in the top. Tighten with a hex key to increase hop, loosen to decrease. At the front of the frame, the gun is marked Mateba and Pavia Italy on the left, and CAT 5577 and serial number 001083 on the right. These markings are all accurate to the real thing, although all the Martians have the same serial number of 1083. On the top of the frame, the rear sight adjusts for windage with a screw on the left side and is a simple notch. The hammer is a thin spur but grooved for better grip, and the cylinder release pushes forwards to release the cylinder. There are two weird things here. First, that the cylinder pivots around the top of the frame rather than the bottom, and second, that the cylinder rotates a full 180 degrees to the top. While the cylinder is plastic, the extractor star is cast Zamac, as are the rear sight, hammer, and cylinder release. The cylinder assembly has a little bit of slop when locked up, but not enough to impact function. The trigger guard and trigger are also metal, and show how well the finish matches the plastic. And lastly, unlike the older Martian Matebas, the new release comes with a wood grip as standard. This is beech wood, stained to a color more typical of European walnut as on the real Mateba, and it has a nice semi-gloss finish and crisp checkering. It conceals a fill valve on the underside for the internal gas tank. The new Matebas use a 357 variant of the Marishin X cartridge shells. Each shell is a brass body with a copper head and has a rubber gasket at the base and a thin o-ring at the front to hold a single BB. This is a hefty and well-made round, and really looks and feels like live ammunition in contrast to, say, chintzy wind gun shells. That said, it's not quite dimensionally accurate to real 357, being both thinner and a bit longer. Overall, this is one of the most convincing looking airsoft replicas I've ever seen, especially for one that is made of completely different materials from the real thing. It is simply gorgeous, with excellent attention to detail. But as soon as I pick it up, I remember, oh yeah, it's plastic. It's got a bit of weight, and it isn't as back-heavy as most plastic airsoft pistols, but I'd never mistake it for the real thing. Well, there's no field stripping on a revolver, so let's take it apart. 
First, the faux barrel unscrews to allow the shroud to come off the front, which reveals the pot metal weight in the shroud that gives it a bit of heft. Next, the grip unscrews and simply pulls off the bottom. The brass sleeve around the barrel unscrews, then the hop nub fully unscrews. One more hex head screw, and two Phillips head screws, and the entire barrel assembly comes out, and the barrel can be pulled straight out the front of the hop unit. This also frees an indexing nub and spring from the frame. Turning the ejector rod clockwise unscrews it, and the extractor star comes out the back. A single pin unscrews from the frame, and out comes the hinge. On the right side of the frame, the top flathead screw secures the cylinder release, while the lower one simply helps retain the side plate. One more screw and off comes the side plate, and now we can see how it works. Despite the unconventional layout, this is a fairly typical revolver mechanism. Actuating the hammer or pulling the trigger pushes up a pawl, which engages with the extractor star to rotate the cylinder. The cylinder stop initially retracts, then pops back up to stop the cylinder once it reaches the correct position. The hammer locks onto a main sear when fully cocked, and releases it when the trigger is pulled. And if the trigger is simply pulled, it cocks the hammer and then releases it. And when the trigger is released, the hammer's double action sear pops past. This is all accurate to the functioning of a real double action revolver, and then we have the added detail of a valve, which is struck by the hammer when firing to release gas. Note that the trigger mechanism blocks the hammer at rest, so pushing forwards on the hammer will not release gas. At the front, the barrel is a unique and proprietary design, with a hop patch that simply sits in a window about a third of the way down the barrel. So when gas is released, it flows through the shell, propelling the BB out of the shell. As it travels down the barrel, the BB impacts the hop patch, which is being directly pushed down by the hop adjustment screw, and receives backspin. Unfortunately, this means there's a tendency for the BB to develop random spin before it passes through the hop patch, the effects of which we'll show momentarily. All these internals are unsurprisingly pop metal, but we don't see significant wear after a few hundred cycles. This system all works fine for what it is and seems reasonably well thought out, but now we get into how that actually performs in practice. So first, operation is straightforward. Fill through the grip and stop filling when it sprays gas. Access the cylinder by pushing forwards on the release and swiveling it upwards. Insert six cartridges. And swivel back down to lock. With the hammer up or cocked, the cylinder cannot be manually rotated once locked in, but if the hammer is partially pulled, it can be freely spun. Either cock the hammer for a fairly crisp single action pull, or just pull for a long and heavy double action. To unload empties, the cartridges will typically drop out on their own, but if necessary, pushing on the ejector will dump the brass. The gun contains about 9 grams of propane on a single fill, good for 100 to 120 shots before needing to be regassed. On the chrono, it clocks in at anywhere from 0.7 joules to 1.05 joules seemingly at random. It obviously has no recoil whatsoever, and makes a soft puff noise when fired as is typical for airsoft revolvers. Then we go to test accuracy, and this is where it all falls apart. Leaving aside that the hop-up doesn't apply enough tension to do above 0.28 grams even when fully engaged, about half the time the BBs hook in unpredictable directions. This appears to be just an unavoidable part of the hop design, which rather than seating the BBs against the bucking before applying consistent backspin, is instead blasting them straight through. The result is that it cannot consistently hit a man-sized target at even 100 feet. This is frustrating, because the Mataba is of course limited to 6 shots. Worse, the heavy trigger, the double action mode, makes it hard to keep on target in rapid fire, while single action mode sharply limits fire rate. And either way, reloading while retaining spent cartridges is a time-consuming process. An HKS 586A speed loader will work for loading new ones, but keeping the cylinder stationary while twisting the speed loader to release can be difficult, and the inverted cylinder pivot makes it harder to maintain control of than a traditional revolver or the later Se Unica. It's a shame because the gun feels great in the hand. It's huge, but the lightweight and narrow wrist to the grip make it feel like a much smaller gun. 
If it were accurate, then it might be viable to just take careful single action shots and bring along a few reloads, but with the BBs going wherever they want, it's unnecessarily difficult. As someone who enjoys playing with airsoft replicas far more than collecting them, bad accuracy is something that sours me on any replica, and in this case it's a real Achilles heel on what is otherwise a solid replica that does everything I expected it to. Awkward reload and low capacity are things you can work around, but if the BBs can't connect then it's just making noise, and to add insult to injury, it of course isn't a particularly impressive noise either. While there's no aftermarket for this gun, and no compatible barrel parts to address the accuracy, so we already reach conclusions and summary. It's a beautiful replica despite the use of plastic, and does a great job replicating the look of the real Mataba, though not quite the feel. It's simple internally, and we have no concerns with durability, is sufficiently gas-efficient to not need to be refilled on the field, and the sheer tactile fun of loading and firing a revolver is faithfully replicated and feels great. But it's awkward to reload in a hurry, it's limited to the realistic capacity of a mere six rounds, and most of all, it has poor consistency that makes the shooting experience frustrating and ineffective despite the now-adjustable hop-up. As far as price, at about 280 USD, the gun is on the high side for an airsoft handgun, and then at about $35 for six cartridges, you're looking at about another 100 bucks just to have comparable capacity to a gas pistol with a single mag. To be blunt, this is still a gun for collectors, and really nobody else, as a gun with neither accuracy nor volume of fire just isn't very useful. If you're a big fan of Ghost in the Shell and only want a cool wall hanger, then yeah, you'll probably enjoy this replica a lot. But if you want a hand cannon to play airsoft with, there are cheaper, more effective, and less frustrating alternatives. I enjoy shooting the real Mataba a lot, but the Marishin 2006M isn't even fun to plink with. Well, I hate to have a downer ending for such a cool piece, but sometimes that's just how it goes. If we manage to fix the hop-up, we may make an update, and we'll put a link in the description if that happens, but for now, I think we're done. So, we hope you enjoy this video, and thanks for watching.